Hello everybody, um, my name is Brett Sheldon, founder of the Business Support Organisation. Um, just a very short intro video to the Evening Word event with Vicky Lovegrove the other night, where she was talking about um, branding, uh, branding in the workplace, um, so I basically give you a few tips on there. Really informative video, uh, I was like really informative um, talk I should say, um, lots of questions at the end, um, so please enjoy. Uh, if you do like these videos, please remember to like the channel, share and subscribe i think that's the three we need to do i'll get used to this one of these days um so yeah that's um brush on uh, from the uh, from the business support organization apologies for the very bare background but we are due to be moving house in the next 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 few days so I'll speak to you soon cheers bye, -bye. so okay so we're going to start the meeting off now thank you very much for attending um obviously we'll be passing over to vicky in a minute she vicky i'm not going to drop her in it but she did say earlier that she was nervous um, so if you you can all be nice later, she has requested that if you keep any heckling till last, that'll be great. Um, so just to start today's uh, evening with off, um, I'm conscious that we've got some new members on here, some people who haven't been on for quite a while. So I'm going to ask you all to do a very quick eight second introduction so you, you know who, who each other are there. And also remember, even though this is more this event is more about education, uh, it is also the opportunity to network as well. So make sure you you do follow up with people, anybody who's of interest. You they say there's going to be people on here people haven't met before. So feel free to make contact. You've got the delegates lists. You've got all the information on there. Everybody's a member, so there's no visitors. So we haven't got to worry about upsetting anybody. So that's okay. Um, so what we'll do, we'll start off with a quick eight second introduction. Um, I'll start with uh, just how my screen's situated at the moment. Uh, Karen, if you'd like to just introduce yourself. Hey. I'm Karen Braun. I'm an NLP master coach and trainer from Bromsgrove, specialising in stress, anxiety, fears and phobias, helping you achieve your full potential. Fantastic. We'll move on to Jane. I'm Jane. I'm with Helena Jane Holistic. I'm a holistic therapist. Uh, I'm here to help you with your wellness. And hopefully after the 12th of April, when I'm allowed to reopen, I'm based back in Blockswitch. Fantastic. And she, she's taking bookings, by the way. I, I booked yep. my session earlier. Uh, so, uh, Moxie, over to you. I'm Moxie of Slide Mall Studios. I animate logos and graphics for your presentation slides or your internet or Instagram or anything like that. Fantastic. Uh, by the way, Jason mentioned he's absolutely chuffed to bits with what you've done for him. I'm chuffed uh, as well. So we'll, be look, we'll be looking forward to it. Uh, Martin? I knew you'd do that when I was doing something else, Brett. Um, Martin, the Warrior Warlow from Warrior Community Initiatives. And I scare people by educating them about stroke and stress, having had a work stress-related stroke myself in 2013. Brilliant. Fantastic. Uh, Michelle? Jordan, coach in the Tech Leader Academy, creating IT leaders that build and inspire. Brilliant. Uh, Richard Egan? Uh, cheers, Brett. Yeah. Hi, everyone. Uh, Richard Egan. So we combine the worlds of leadership training and development with corporate and social responsibility, CSR, and just deliver some pretty incredible leadership development initiatives. Brilliant, fantastic. Um, Mr. Jones? Uh, Val Jones from Revital U. <clears throat> we provide health and wellbeing products, but we don't want people to buy them. We want them to try them first. Brilliant. Uh, Daryl? Uh, Daryl Smith, Beacon Business Solutions. We create uh, bespoke web applications, websites, and mobile apps. Brilliant. Uh, Vicky? It's easy if you're muted, Vicky. Good start. Um, Vicky from 73 Design, um, graphic design and brand identity and creative coach. Brilliant. Uh, Pierre? Pierre Watson, a.k.a. Pierre the Bear. Copywriting, crafting words for the win. Brilliant. Um, Sarah? Uh, yeah, uh, agency owner. We're creative partners to marketing teams, helping them with their um, graphic design, branding, brand communications and marketing support. Brilliant. Uh, Mr. Koss? Yeah, uh, John Goss, uh, JC Cybersecurity Services, defending, protecting, and securing your business. Uh, brilliant. Uh, Mr. Gill? Well, I'm on the other end of it, um, safeguarding you at uh, your home and your business by providing the right solutions. Fantastic. Uh, Joe? Joe Watkins, Q6IT, providing fully managed IT services to businesses. Brilliant. And finally, Gary? 
Gary Watkins, also Q6IT, helping businesses get the best out of their IT systems. Fantastic. Brilliant. Okay, so that's that's everybody. Obviously, ran through there. I don't think I forgot anybody. Um, by the way, when this video gets published later, if you do want to check it out, we've, we've now started getting rather funky graphics coming up. So when you've done your, your introductions, it, it crops up and says who you are. We'll put links to websites and things where we've got them. So uh, it should be quite good fun for you. So I'm going to hand over to Vicky, or we'll hand over to Vicky in a second once I actually make her a co-host. Otherwise, she's, this the presentation that she's got prepared, and otherwise she won't be able to show it. So Vicky, you are now a co-host, so you'll be able to share what you're doing in a second. So just to give a very quick introduction, Vicky, how, how long have we, we known each other for now? How long, how long will you admit for? Well, I've been up here for 15 years, so 15 years. Yeah, so we, I don't think it's quite that long. So I think it's about twelve years we've known each other. All right. So okay. it's um, I know it, I know it seems like longer, but yeah, you haven't <laughs> got to rub it in. Um, so me and Vicky first met each other through through BNI circles back in the day. Uh, lots and lots of great work. And and to be fair, a couple of months ago, she basically asked, would she be okay to basically do a presentation one of the evening withs to discuss uh, branding, various areas. So the answer was, well, well yeah, of course it is. More than happy to do that. Um, so Vicky, I'm going to hand straight over to you if you want to share your screen. Okay, um, here goes. Did you mention earlier as well you wanted questions at the end? Is that yeah? Is that it? Yeah. Yep. No problem at all. Oh, hang on a minute. Does that mean Vic we can't interrupt? Oh no. More specifically, I can't interrupt you because I'm so looking forward to just kind of winding you up as you're presenting. Thank you. Vicky, oh, I just hope it's as good. As you have the ability to uh, mute him. Okay. <laughs> um, right. Can't actually. Okay, so I'll just share my desktop, do I? Yeah, so if you go click on to share screen, okay. and it'll probably give you, it depends if you work, are you working on one screen or two screen setup? Oh, God, it's not working. Oh, no. Don't worry, it's okay. With these things, it's okay. We can cut all this out. It's absolutely fine. We have, we have the power to do editing. Um, so if you, if you click on share screen. Okay, yeah, it's just got, um, it's just got a triangle. Hang on a moment. Um, bear with. Oh, hang on. Yeah, I've got to do that. Okay. Right, I've got to leave Zoom and come back in. Okay, so I'll tell you what, we'll, we'll have an hour <laughs> thing on there. So if you're jumping off and come back in again, it's a good okay. job. We're not streaming this live now, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> Sorry about this, everybody. Ah, it's no problem at all. It's not a problem. So we'll see Vicky in a second. So, right, okay. So the question is now, when Vicky comes back in, are we, because I'm not going to cut all that out. It's a case of, are we going to have a round of applause? Or what? what, what Should we all hide? We could all hide. Oh, yeah. Oh, off, the, off the camera. Yeah, I mean, I, 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 I've got to keep an eye on it. Um, so what we'll do, I mean, I have to let her back in again in a second. So if everybody wants to hide in a second, that'll be great. So when she comes on, I'll say, okay, hide everybody hide and i'll let her in and say oh yeah okay cool i like i like the, i like the thinking i like the thinking behind that so oh, and she's coming back in so does anybody want to hide <laughs> dave's not playing come on dave just just look down a bit look, look, look down oh here we go hi vicky you there I wondered what you were all going to do. <laughs> everybody, everybody was there. What's going on? Okay, everybody can come back now. That's it. <laughs> you need to share the screen. Let me share the screen yep, again. One second. It's a case of uh, <laughs> making co-hosts. So you are now a co-host. Right, so let's, let's try again, shall we? Oh, well, come on. What, what, what Vicky's doing, was that cruel or not? <laughs> I'm not saying anything, Vicky, but it was Daryl who suggested it. <laughs> Sorry, Vicky. That's okay. No, Brett, you need to let me. Yeah. Share. But it was share. Brett that pulled the trigger. Yes, he was. But I'm, but I'm young and young and impressionable. <laughs> I tell you, what, was waiting then because um, if I just give you guys a because Vicky did some design work for us a couple of years ago. Yeah. Um, and it was brilliant. She developed a shoebox marketing tool thing for us yeah so we just wanted some something different that we could send out to potential prospects okay and our whole thing is around uh, mentoring and leadership development yeah and oh, an hour conversation with vicky she went away 
Yep. Two days later, came back with a whole load of different suggestions, one of which was a shoe box with some shoes in and some promotional materials. Right. Sent out to four or five prospects. Every single one, even before I got to my point where I needed to follow them up, either the director directly or the director's his ex assistant either rang me or emailed me to find out more about what we were doing. Every single one that we sent out to off the back of Vicky's work was really, really good. Really good. I think, I think that's what you call a testimonial, Vicky. Yeah, yeah. That was it. Was a really good one to work on. That was really interesting. Right, I've having a massive hot flush, and I will proceed. <laughs> no Absolutely fine. We, we like all the ad libs. So, uh, anyway, so welcome on stage, uh, Vicky Lovegrove from Seventy Three Design. Thank you. So I thought uh, I would do a presentation about how you can apply. Um, brand identity sort of rules to your business's look and feel, brand look and feel. I do a lot of networking and I, I hear a lot of people say, I can design your branding for you. I can sit, stick your branding on a mug. I can do this with your branding. And it's often the wrong terminology because branding, it's a bigger concept than something that's just visual. And so I wanted to sort of share that with you I'm, I know of quite a few of you will probably know this but there's going to be some people that don't and it's not a logo your branding isn't your logo I that's what I do I design logos and um, I apply um, a brand identity scheme to people's marketing but a brand is what your vision what your values and beliefs are and so before you start thinking about anything visual, you need to really decide who you are as a brand. But the brand isn't what you stick on a mug or a t-shirt. And we'll go, I'll go into that a bit further. So why do we create brands? We create brands so that people recognize you. They recognize you for your values. They can trust you as a business, it upheld, upholds your reputation if you don't do it properly. And it's ultimately a way of persuading people to work with you, having a decent brand. Again, it's not the visual side of things. So if you read the quote in the box, um, that's why we brand. That's why we spend time on deciding what we are, who we are, and um, what we mean to do in our business. So I thought I'd look at a few um, different well-known brands and their visual side of them. And um, I've picked out this one. I'm sure you can recognize this one. Uh, it's recognizable mainly because of the color, but also because of the font and the font works in every kind of language. I've also picked out McDonald's, because this is a brand that has recently, in the last five years, repositioned themselves. And this is a good thing to do in your business as well. When you're going through some kind of change, it's good to visually reposition yourself. So once you've gone through your, your brand values and you've decided why you need to make some change in your business, then it's good to implement that visually. Just to let people know that things have changed and what direction you're going in. They did it because the black and the yellow was a bit jarring and it didn't really work with younger people these days. They needed something more friendly. People are too savvy these days and they need to be um, coerced almost into buying a burger these days. It's got to feel a lot more friendly um, than it used to. This is one that I really like, Magnus. It's quite an interesting um, brand actually. So I've got some notes about Magnus here. Um, when they rebranded in 2005, they rebranded just to get in with the um, London market. There was lots of premium beers around at the time and they wanted to try and compete with that. They didn't change anything about the drink. It was previously a very hard drinker's drink. It was on the lines of Buckfast and 
what they did was reposition it by literally pouring it over ice and they increased the price but, and made it 20% more expensive than the most expensive premium beer at the time, therefore making it something that people really wanted. And in the first year, they increased their sales by 332% just by repositioning where their brand sat. So it was quite interesting because this one, there wasn't necessarily a lot of redesign visually apart from the positioning of how you serve the beer at the cider. So it was quite interested. And they were instantly followed by other brands like Balmers. And now loads of people serve fruity ciders over ice because of that. But it, it, this is the reason why you rebrand and why you would make changes to your brand. It's always about the value of what you're trying to achieve rather than visually what you do so yeah going back to this brand isn't a logo so when you're um, looking at setting up your business or perhaps going for a rebrand you need really need to before you talk to anybody to do anything visual you need to decide same as most things in business the who what how and where who are you what is it you do really what is it you do what is the benefits of working with you how do you do that and how um, can you show that to people and what are your goals where where are you go in and when I work with people um, to design logos I really expect them to have done this before they speak to me especially some of the larger companies and sometimes if they haven't got that in their team then we pull in people um, to help work with that, depending on what the sort of business is. But it's something you can do yourself. And this is what I'm going to try and show you through this presentation. It's about things you can do yourself before you get a professional involved. And sometimes you don't even need the professional. You can do a lot of this yourself. So um, let's go through. So what I do is design brand identities. Um, along with Sarah and lots of other creatives in this group. And that's the overall look and feel of communications. So your business card, your van livery, your shirts that you're wearing when you go to meetings, your Zoom background, everything should have some sort of consistent feel. And it may, helps make you recognisable, like the McDonald's thing. <laughs> I read a study yesterday. McDonald's logo, the Golden Arches, has been deemed more recognisable globally than the Christian cross. I mean, it's hard to believe, but then there are some countries where they don't necessarily have Christianity, but they will have a McDonald's. So... That just shows how powerful a very simple brand identity can be. It's just a couple of arches and one colour. And it's been like that since 1953. So it's really powerful. So you don't have to overcomplicate things. And I would say go, going forward in your um, marketing materials, don't overcomplicate things. Keep things simple. Keep your messaging simple. Everything has to visually put a line under what your core values are. So it's all again about visual consistency. There's so many things you do in your business and you might think, oh, well, I'm, I'm just going to email that out. Just think about how it looks before you do so, because it still is representing you, even if you're not paying for something to be printed or you're not paying for something to be coded and put up online even the smallest thing internally, it, even it just needs to be consistent. If you've got a lot of staff as well, I think that's important as well because it keeps everybody focused, whether they know it or not, it, it really does. So how do you begin developing a brand identity? Well, 
one of the good things to do is start thinking about your tone of voice. How do you want to be seen? Are you going to be an expert? Are you going to be friendly? Are you going to be more corporate? That tone of voice should work across your copy. I recommend if, if you're not into writing, but I would recommend you have a go, but if you're not into writing, speak to a copywriter, chat to them, tell them what your values are, your brand values are, and work with them to create that tone, correct tone of voice. The same as, again, with your photography. Any photography you do, even if you take, it, you take pictures yourself, think about how it can work with everything else. So think about, is it an informal photo? Do you want a bit of color in there? If so, is there any of your corporate colors in there? You can do something simple like if your colors are blue and green, you could wear a tie with those, those colors in. The little tiny things tie in your brand and just underline everything and make everything consistent. And the same when you're working with anybody to create video or if you do video yourself, always have in your mind what the core values are so that you can keep the story consistent with everything else. And I would say if you use stock photography, a lot of my clients do, make sure it's really good quality and don't be tempted to take people's photos off websites. If you see a really good photo that you like on Google, don't just take it. It belongs to somebody and you can, it can catch up with you. But you could use it as an example to show to somebody if you're working with a professional photographer, this is the sort of style I like. So, you know, use it as a mood board, but don't stick it on your website if you don't pinch imagery from anywhere. I had to have this conversation with a client this week. They wanted a logo and they'd seen one they liked and they just thought I could copy it. <laughs> well, I wouldn't anyway, because that's not what I'm paid to do. But I, I did have to explain to them about copyright and they didn't, they didn't know about that. So just be careful. And if, if you feel it's a bit beyond you or you just don't have the time or the interest, it's really important when you choose a professional creative, get some recommendations. I'm often referred, I know Sarah is as well. That's a really good way of getting a recommendation. Always meet a designer or a photographer, anybody creative, get to know them. Quite often, people can't design for other people if they don't feel that there's something there. So. You, you need to make a connection. You need to talk and have a couple of meetings, get to look at their um, portfolio, see what they've done. And don't just judge creatives on price. Somebody expensive might not be the right fit for you. And somebody cheaper might not be either. It's all about making a connection, excuse me, pitch invasion. Good night. Okay. My neck hurts. Okay, off you go. Come on. <laughs> I can't I'm, I'm busy. I <laughs> so remember when you're working for creative that you really should have some kind of rapport because it's it's generally not going to work. Okay. Right, she's gone now. And also they're choosing you as well. Um I don't work with everybody myself. I, I can't speak for anybody else, but if I feel like I can't get on with somebody, I won't be able to design for them. So. so what can you do? Simple things you can do to make sure your brand identity is consistent. Colors. If you pick some colors, make a note of their breakdown. So if you're only gonna use them in your Word document, you've got these things called RGB, you can see it on the green one. That's what the colors will look like on your screen. Make a note of those. If you're gonna get stuff printed, the CMYK is how you break down print colors. 
just make notes of them and use them every single time. Um, be consistent. Same with fonts. If you, you know, choose a font that's going to work, but stick with it. Don't keep using lots of different fonts. It looks a mess for a start, but also makes people doubt you. It doubts your professionalism. So they're little clues to people that you might not be up to the job if those sort of things are not consistent. So colours, I've chosen a, a local colour, Cadbury. Colours really do spark emotion and mean things to a lot of people. You then Some products are more memorable because of the colour. I had a client who I, I had to redesign their logo and the logo had existed for 75 years. So it was quite a daunting job. And I had to keep the colour because in some countries, they just referred to the company by the colour. They'd say, oh, the blue one, <laughs> rather than what the company was called. On another occasion, I had to work with a truck company and they insisted I used a baby pink, <coughs> which surprised me. But it, they were very insistent on it. It had very strong... Um, feelings about that kind of colour uh, so it, it meant something to them so if colour means something to you that's a, that's a valid way of using it but also see what it means to your customers as well um, how would they feel if you were start if you started to use pink a lot would it put people off using you or would it draw people to you so always consider your colours it's quite a simple thing to do. It takes consideration, though. And when you're going along and you're designing things either with a creative or on your own, you can use the colours consistently and the fonts consistently. And you'll see it ties everything together. and use the colours through all the imagery. I said before about if you have any photos taken, put something in there that's got your brand colours in there. That's just such a simple thing to do, but um, it's really effective. And if you have any illustration done, tie in those colours as well. It just helps to hold everything together and it, and it, it feels right and it makes everything more professional. Yeah, so typography, it's not just about picking the fonts that came with the word. It's about picking the fonts which are going to get your message across clearly. There's um, the joke within design circles about Comic Sans, and I think generally the joke about Comic Sans. Comic Sans. Um, that, was, that font was designed for legibility, for people with certain... Um, um, learning difficulties so it's not really the sort of font you should use if you're a large corporate and you're trying to get a really serious message across so always consider what is the message you'll get you're trying to get across and how clear it needs to be people will give up very easily reading something if it's not legible so don't make it hard for people, make it really easy and pick some clear fonts. So easy to get fonts these days. Fonts are very expensive, but there are a lot of very good ones on Google fonts. So it's google.fonts and they're all free. And some of them are very similar to some classic fonts and they work on the web as well as everything else. So they're a really great place to start if you just want some clean, clear fonts for your literature. <coughs> so yeah, it helps, like I said just now, it helps to absorb complicated information, facts and figures, if it's clear, clean and easy to read. I've always um, spoken to people about, when they go through the design process, that it helps 
to make a good in first impression if you've got a logo and you've got basic brand guidelines and things are designed in a fairly good way um, and it always used to be business cards for the first port of call obviously we're using those a lot less and I don't know how often we're going to use those going forward um, probably very little actually so think about when is the first time somebody is going to see you so it could be your social media it could be you, you're having a uh, zoom call with somebody it's a sales call it could be that you've sent something out to them, a letter. The first impressions really do count. And when you're not there to represent yourself fully, then your literature should really be doing that for you. And that's another reason to have this clear identity, visual identity, so people can understand that this belongs to you and you are professional because of it. And obviously it works across websites as well. Um, and again, it's all about the tone of voice as well. And I often get people think that because they've done it once, that's it, it's done. But your business isn't done the first, in the first year or the first couple of years. You have to keep checking in on your brand identity. You might have changed markets, moved into different fields, different sectors. Does it still stand? Is it still right for your business? Does it need tweaking? I would say don't be tempted to redesign your logo every year. A decently designed logo will take into account the fact your business is going to grow. You would have discussed with the designer where you want your business to be in the next five, 10 years. And in my opinion, your logo should last for about five, six years before you have to really think about tweaking it. But everything around that can change. So you can tweak your fonts. You can add colors into your color palette to freshen things up a bit. You can change the type of photography that you use um, and you can change, you can have a look at your tone of voice going through all the time, just keeping it up to date. So if you decide that your customers need to be um, spoken to in a more fun way than what you've done before, don't be afraid to do that, but just keep it consistent um, across everything. Right, I've got to the end. So, um, any questions? Brilliant. I think that's absolutely great. Uh, well, Vicky, well done. I've got a round of applause for Vicky. It's a case of, uh, and, and her able assistant. I think that's uh, well, well really done. Sorry yeah. about that. But don't worry about it, Vicky. At the end of the day, the one thing we've all learned during COVID times, we, we're now working in people's homes. Things are real. Kids don't realise this. So just, just keep going and just have, just have fun with it. So really well done. So I've got a couple of questions down. Does anybody have any questions for Vicky? Um, I, mean, Mar I mean, there's some, some good questions coming up in the, in the, in the um, comments coming up. Martin, you've got a couple of good points on there. Does anybody want to jump in with a couple of questions? Uh, the, the first question I, I asked Vicky that was right at the very start of it, why do people prefer yellow? Why do people prefer yellow? Yeah. Well, it depends what market they're in, really. Um, it, it gets you seen, that's for sure. But, yeah, it's friendlier. Because you said that McDonald's had changed their mm. logo yeah, to make it more yellow. Yeah, they've done, they've done um, a lot of research, obviously, being McDonald's. And they're, they've gone through the green phase, trying to appear more healthy. That didn't work. People weren't buying into that. Um, they'd gone for the, the black phase. Um, I'm, I'm not entirely sure why, but that didn't really work either. And it was starting to be a bit tired and they were losing um, business. You can't tell people a burger is healthy. Nobody believes it. People don't want a healthy burger. So what they decided to do was just make everybody feel good about going to McDonald's. And that yellow colour does make you feel good. So 
you go in and get a burger and it's presented in a in lovely white and yellow packaging. Well, this isn't bad, is it? You know, so it's it's about changing your mood. Right. Oh, great, great question. Great answer. Pierre, you put a nice question in there as well. Uh, Daryl, I've seen your hand raise. I'll come to you next. Um, where's everybody's, everybody's moved? Where's there you are, Pierre? Pierre, you mentioned something about fonts. Yeah, just in design terms. I mean, are some fonts greater than others? Um, if so, which ones? Yeah, generally, <laughs> there's a lot of fonts, lots of free fonts out there. And um, that a lot of them are free for a reason. They're, when they might be okay for headlines and making statements stand out, but they're not necessarily good for blocks of text. So it's okay within an identity scheme to maybe have one font which you use for maybe pulling out quotes and then all your body text having in a more legible font. I say generally, um, it's it's down to it's down to um, your own opinion as a company, but a lot of scientific companies generally embody in the text they prefer a serif font, so I don't know, sort of like Times or something like that. But they might use a sans serif, like a Helvetica, for a headline. You can have a mixture. But you've got to think about how much text is there that people are prepared to read and um, take on board. You don't often see books printed in sans serifs. You might have noticed they'll usually be a serif because it's a longer read. Cool. What's a serif? Um, so, so if you look at um, times, mm. which will be in your word, yep. times has got curly bits on the on the lettering and they're called serifs cool remember vicky you're talking to us here now yeah <laughs> I mean, remember some, some of the conversations we have with people it's how do you download an app so <laughs> like, I mean, let's be honest the term curly bits is good we can we can curly, curly bits that, that's yeah good. curly bits i think yeah. i think most people now there i think there was there was only sarah who knew what was what you were talking about there I think you, <laughs> everything, yeah. some people go what's a curly you'll, bit you'll um, be surprised <laughs> yeah, cool. So I'm going to go to Daryl next. Because Daryl did raise his hand. Then I'm going to go to Gary. Then I'm going to go to Martin. So uh, where, have you, where have you gone, Daryl? There you are. I'm, I'm, I'm here. I'm here. I'm here. I, I'm resisting the urge to say who shot the serif, but um, you know. <laughs> oh no! Um, come on, that's bad. <laughs> yeah, that, that's really bad. When, when Jack gets to do some kind of animations or something, <laughs> like, he's shot or something. I no, the, the the real question, Vicky, was um, obviously you spoke about kind of McDonald's changing their brand but for for a kind of a an sme business mm -hmm. what what are the kind of trigger points whereby we should look for to know it's kind of time to change the brand okay i'll tell you when people normally come to me so they often come to me and it's just across the board for as long as i can remember at a three year period or a five to seven year period in their business and it's usually because they're going through some kind of change. So a lot of businesses, to save money at the beginning, might have done stuff themselves or done stuff mm. cheaply. And then they're a few years into their business. They know the business is going well, but they're possibly moving into different markets or they're starting to realise that what they decided at the beginning is beginning to jar with their customers and they're not looking aligned with their customers. That's a time to rebrand. At the five, seven year period, often people, often companies are going through some larger change. So moving into different sectors, possibly considering um, new management, succession, um, those sort of changes coming up in the future. Getting themselves ready to sell is a common one that I get involved in. Um, yeah, so if you're going to be going through a management buyout, often that's a time to rebrand. Um, it gives the staff confidence that you're investing. So you're buying in and you're investing. It's not a huge investment uh, I'm doing a rebrand, but people don't really understand that. It's, um, it can be very cost effective, but it does really give people confidence. If I've worked with management on management buyout um, projects before, and particularly with engineering companies and 
the staff are worried they're going to lose their jobs. But if they're handed a pack of new branded shirts, there's new signage going up outside the building and, and the vehicles are reliverated, that gives people confidence that the money is being invested. Yeah. So it's, that's a time to do it as well. Okay, thank you. Fant fantastic question there, Dal. Uh, we'll go to Gary next. Gary, you had your hand raised, then we'll go to Martin. Yeah, mine was the same question, actually, so uh, you, you've answered that. Thank you. <laughs> oh, come on, Joe. Come on, J Joe, have a word. Come on, this is, this is terrible. I mean, we let, we let Gary come on, and what's going on? It's, this is terrible. Uh, Martin, uh, hopefully you've not got the same question. No, I haven't got the same question. That's a relief. That's good. Firstly, as a journalist, I know what a sheriff is. Um, <laughs> <laughs> and secondly... You can't make the point enough about copyright infringement, can you, Vicky? No, no. I would say anything that's... Journalists, I've seen it all the time, and mm. if you get it wrong, it can be very, very, very expensive. Very expensive, and people do pursue it. They really do pursue it. I think there's a general thing, oh, there's so much on the internet, they'll never find me. You put an image into Google and Google that image and you can see how many times that's been used. And people do it all the time. Um, they, they employ large solicitor firms, bigger companies do, to just check every day to see where their name features or where their logo features. And um, I've years ago, I was working for um, a large NHS um, offshoot and um i got an email one day um from one of the colleagues there saying we've spotted you and i had i had done a talk at the college in burton and i'd mentioned that i did work for them and they put that in the article on the college news page and i think it's um, i can't remember the solicitor um, that did work for the NHS and they found it and obviously flagged it up to the team and they're like oh that's all right yeah she does work for us but they do check so don't ever think people won't find out because they will <laughs> yeah, just well, when I worked for the Birmingham Post we had a contract with them um, with Getty Images to, to use their sports pictures but not their news pictures so if we ever used a news picture we'd get a bill for a thousand pound yeah and they do check it's, I'd, I'd yeah. say just for people on here either watching this video or whether the people are live, I get a call every year from somebody saying, I've had a letter from Getty Images for threatening to take me to court. It's going to be 20 grand or whatever it is. They're threatening to have my knees broken unless I do something <laughs> else off the back of it. What the heck do I do? They go, <laughs> plead innocence. Plead innocence. Do what you want and settle it because they, they, they make a lot of money by taking people to court because they know exactly where they, yeah. where they are. So to make sure your images, you've got permission to do whatever, whatever you need to. Um, John, you yeah. your hand raised? Yes, I suppose on that note, with copywriting, if we are advertising our customers' logos, our partners' logos, we're doing case studies that mm -hmm. link back to client websites with their logos, does an email saying you can use my logo for this, does that cover you? Yes, always ask permission, always ask permission. And also when it comes to designing things like logos, don't ever think you can get away with taking a bit from one logo you like and a bit from another logo you like because they search for that too. It's all about being original and, you know, it, it, there will be some things just by fluke might look similar, but it's very easy to spot something that's just been deliberately copied, even though you think you might have hidden that. Anybody with an eye can spot it instantly, and they use they use AI to do that now. So, hmm. cool, excellent stuff. I mean, any other questions from members? I mean, I've got a couple. Uh, Dave. Yeah, just to sort of say that quite a few years ago, uh, not my current website, it was like about 10, 15 years back, uh, the chap or the company that did my website, uh, they obviously use uh, images mm -hmm. and they must have been um, getting images. And um, I think a few years later, I actually had a bill for it. And luckily, the my contract with the company was that whatever they're going to use is going to be authorized pictures and obviously a license to whatever wording you use. Mm -hmm. And so therefore I was able to sort of refer them back to the company and say, well, sorry, but approach them rather than approach me. 
Mm. And I would also say it may feel expensive to get a photographer or a copywriter or a designer to do some work for you. But think about how long you're going to use it for. Most most photographic shoots, um, which are sort of editorial and used across all marketing material, so not just a photo going to be used in a newsletter, newspaper or something, most of those photos, the photographer is really expecting you to use those for about five years. So break down the cost over five years. And things like logo design, break down how long are you expecting to have your business for? If you're expecting to have your business for 10 years, break that cost down over 10 years and see what the value is. I recently worked out that it's a it's the price of a cup of coffee a week. <laughs> it's, it's ridiculous. So they're an investment and they're an investment so that you don't get caught out using stuff you shouldn't do. Totally, totally agree. And, and another great point there and, and just as a general tip again for just different people again if they're watching this or if people are obviously listening here when you're talking to people like graphic designers photographers things like that one of the biggest biggest bill is their time so if you've got a photographer on site tell them about all the other projects and all of that spend another hour with them and they'll probably take the next three years with the photos at the same time for for lots of other things it's a really simple tip to do and uh, also don't assume excuse me my voice going don't assume something belongs to you creative copyright belongs to the creator not the person who paid for it and i would flag that up as well you have to check when you're buying something creative does it belong to me and make sure they put in writing yes it does or no you're just licensing it with a lot of photography you're licensing it off the photographer and they'll tell you how many years you can license it for um, a lot of um, graphic design it belongs to the designer not to you i i sign over ip i don't really want it but it's not the case with everybody and also it is the law that it belongs to the creative not to you cool. so just double check that um, I would like to say also I have a little book, a pocket guide to brand identity. If anybody would like one, email me and I'll post you one out. Brilliant. Thank you very much. I mean, if you, if, Vicky, if you can do that for me, it's always handy to have things like that anyway. Uh, that'd be fantastic. Uh, I'm going to ask you a question here for me. So the, the question is, uh, what's the biggest mistake you normally see with businesses regarding their brand? Inconsistency. Okay. Every time. Cool. And I have a second question, a little bit more of a fun question. Do you have a favorite brand? If so, why? Hmm. And, I, and I don't want to go, no, I want him to pick a favorite brand. Because then don't worry, because I know Sarah does graphic design and things as well. So I'm going to get to <coughs> Sarah, Sarah the same question. So uh, I, I, we're a very inclusive organization here. So your, your favorite and brand? At the moment, for me, it is McDonald's. Um, they're working with some really great British design agencies who are doing some really amazing advertising. Their latest billboard adverts are very clever, very well done. I would urge you to Google them. Um, if you can't find them, email me and I'll send you a link to them. They're, they're just very clever at the moment. And that's what I love. What got me into graphic design and then this will date me, is I love the silk cut ads. Right. Um, the ones that um, Saatchi did back in the 80s. Um, they were just very clever, and there's lots of conceptual stuff to it. So, um, yeah, that's why I got into graphics, cigarette advertising. Brilliant. <laughs> Fantastic. Sarah, same question to you. Ooh, um I think I have two or three at the moment. It does change, but like Vicky, I love mm. the cleverness of it. Um, Cadbury's is always at my heart just because my parents worked for Cadbury's for many years and I just grew up with it when I was little. Um, and it's been fascinating to see the changes over the year. Um, but I really love innocent smoothies and drinks. Mm. They're really, really fun, really playful, really colourful, vibrant. So I love it for those reasons. But I also love Nando's. And if you read yeah. Boppy on Nando's, it's so, so clever. Um, and I think I kind of value the brands where they've really thought about their execution and you can mm. tell that they doesn't have to be like 
loads, but they've just thought about it. It's like Vicky said at the very beginning, before you actually go to the visual identity, you need to understand what it is you're trying to say and who to, and then develop a brand around that. And I think those three did that for me. Mm. Absolutely fantastic. Martin, you got your hand raised again? It's easy if you're unmuted, Martin. Good. Um, yeah, I'm not now. Um, I'll put this in, in, in the chat. Someone that you know, Brett, once told me a long time ago, if you've got a brand and you've got branded gear, never, ever, ever be seen outside that branded gear, which is why I always wear my purple hoodies and T-shirts to meeting, because people would associate me with the purple. And it's the, the purple is on my website. It's on my podcast landing page. It's on all of my brand my branded clothes, uh, and people now associate me with that purple. Cool. Yeah, I think I think there's, there's pros and cons to both. It's um, I, I think I think you're right. In some, in, in some context, there, Martin, absolutely. It's the I mean, one of the reasons you never see me in a tie is because I do <laughs> not want to be I do not want to be seen as oh it's 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 stiff it's oh it's that. It, it's yeah. I want things to be a little bit more fun. Hence the reason we have a completely blank cream background that is. That, but yeah, it's, it's ever changing because it's the furniture is gradually moving to the new place. So it's uh, it's not not by intent. But yeah, it's um. But no, Martin, some great points. Does anybody else want to raise anything else on here? I mean, the one thing I want to raise is Gary. How have you managed to get the, a picture of everything going on on Zoom as your background? <laughs> I don't know. Gary's, Gary's disappeared, but he's done something. He's done something funky. I don't know. Sorry. Um, <laughs> you've been playing, Genevieve. Just, sorry, this question to mm-hmm. Vicky. Color green. Yeah. On your sort of emails and stuff. What from what my green? Um, my yeah. emails. E- emails. Sorry, yeah. I, I missed the question. Yeah, particular particular reason using the color green. Um, well, it's it's my um, brand, so I can say what I like about it. <laughs> I just I just like it, but I'm I'm going through a change at the moment, so you're going to see different colors coming in. Um, I've had my logo for a really long time, and um, the <laughs> I've only stuck with it because I've got a lot of pads sitting in the corner of my room, which are which got have got a lot of branded up. Um, so any, anybody wants a desk pad, let me know and I'll post you some desk pads too because I need to shift them. <laughs> this is like a bring and buy sale, isn't it? It's great. Yeah. It's great. <laughs> it's, it's, anybody else want to get rid of some stuff? You never have too many desk pads. Absolutely. Oh, it was such a good... It, I just really don't know what I was thinking. I thought, oh, that's not a bad price. I'll get some more. <laughs> and now I forgot how big they were and I've got, I've got a tower of them. Now. We're moving We're moving in the next few weeks. So in terms of that, it's a case of, uh, yeah, desk pads always come in handy. Uh, more <laughs> yeah. than happy. Uh, if, if anybody else has got anything, I mean, I, I don't know. Mont Blanc pens we can always make use <laughs> for them um Aston Martins have always a little good on the drive um if, if it was a Bentley going through and know Val likes his Bentleys it's a case of that uh, any other questions for anybody else I mean for, for Vicky on here is there a, is there any color that you would never use for a font for a, a logo um no not really I mean it it really depends on what your business is and you know who your customers are. Um, like I say, the truck company, I was really surprised that they wanted pink. I wouldn't have suggested pink, but I, I tied it in with some um, darker colours, which actually made it pop even more. But they had these pink trucks that are going up and down the country and well, they've, at least got, they've got a reputation. Yeah, exactly. They've got a good reputation. So, Is that the one with yeah. a picture of a baby on the back? No, that's the pink truck company. That's a different one. They came after this one. <laughs> Is it Andy Freight? No, it's all truck in Leicestershire that I, I did okay. all the branding for. Okay. okay. So uh, any other questions? Um, okay, um, Michelle? Yeah, I'm just going to say that was really informative. Thank you, Vicky. That's okay. And also, I, I would like to say to anybody, if you're not sure about what you've got, just ping something over to me and I'll have a look for you and put your mind at ease or maybe give you some tips because quite 
quite often people think that they need to redesign everything and sometimes they just need to just tidy up a little element and it will be fine so brilliant fantastic uh, can we have a round of applause for vicky i think that was really really good i, I, I really enjoyed it um i mean the, obviously it all goes to a a vote at the end of the year but i think it's certainly at the moment in in the running for for a presentation of the year just purely simply the content you're going through and it's always a, it's always a, a really good guide for how many questions come off the back of it oh uh, yes i guess so yes yes thank you no uh, well it's either that or you, you don't want any questions so you just use them all the time so that's another <laughs> i'm stopping it so v vicky thank you very much for me uh, off the back of it i i hadn't seen the presentation uh i just trusted vicky to do what what she wanted um next month we've got a slight change so we haven't got a member who's talking next month uh but we've got mark gilman uh, for the um, for the evening with so Mark Gilman, some of you may have met before from Birmingham City University. Um, so they've gone through a, a big program of looking at businesses, how the various programs. Uh, we went through one of the BCU programs during lockdown, uh, and a lot of come actually could probably need. To, I probably could do with having a chat with somebody about branding because tying our values and everything else into where things lie, it probably doesn't fit these days. But it's, it's in terms of where everything that is, is one, there's a lot of resources available through the university uh, and not just their other universities, but also the research they've done about where problems lie within businesses, the business lifestyles, uh, life cycles, sorry. Um, so there's gonna be a lot of things on there. We, so we've invited Mark to come and do a talk um, next time. And then after that, we've got, I can't remember what's after that. Uh, but anyway, so anybody got any ideas for events, please let us know. And obviously bear in mind that over the coming months, not only will we be running things virtually, we'll also be running things face to face and we'll be running them in the hybrid format as well. This kind of style meeting will definitely be one of those we'll be looking at from a hybrid style. So we've got people zooming in and in person at the same time. So I'm, I'm excited for those times. So just start rounding up the meeting. Does any, anybody else want to raise anything else? Anybody have any questions at all? What's going on? No, cool. In that case, then, that makes it a very nice, easy meeting today. Um, watch out for an email from me in the next couple of days. Um, I just want to highlight where people are with um, basically the importance behind the BSO members portal. Uh, also, where all things tie in. We're, we're at a very interesting point of the company that we can start getting our members start and do the heavy lifting in terms of creating exposure for lots of people all at the same time. So it's a case if you haven't created your own uh, members directory entry yet, please make sure you do it. Sarah, I know you're smirking there. I know you haven't done it yet. Uh, I'm not going to single out anybody at all, but Sarah hasn't created her um, hers. But don't worry, Martin hasn't done it either. It's a case of it's, it's, it's not a hiding. I think everybody else has done it. Mox is, Mox is a brand new member and Mox has done it. It's a case of, Daryl, you know when I rang you the other day to remind you about doing it, you promised to do it two weekends ago. Did you do it? No. No. No, it's terrible. Don't worry. The, the day, Dave's the same. <laughs> we, 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 we get in there. Don't worry. The, um, Mr. Regan, don't worry. You're not escaping either. <laughs> I, serve. I, 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 I love this naming and shaming card thing because Mox has been really good. Val's nearly done most of his. Uh, have, you got, have, you, have, you done, have you done the logo, Val? Did you? No, it's okay. So we get in there. The, the reason we want all the... Oh, by the way, I'll just I'll tell you now. So the, the whole idea behind the, the portal, it's the, it's the driving point for everything else we're doing. So when you talk about branding, and talk, oh, this probably ties in quite nicely. The BSO is not about us. It's about the members. So if we can start creating more exposure and get people talking about the things that you want to talk about. So for instance, the reason we recorded this tonight is to get talking, people talking about branding. If people are talking about branding, they might go, oh, actually, I could do with having a chat with somebody off that. They might want to speak to Vicky. They might want to speak to Sarah. There's other members who can help as well. It's If we can get these conversations started, we can use things like social media, but not only just our social media, we can share it through ours. But then the chances are, if Vicky, if we put put a video on there saying here's here's Vicky talking about branding, the chances are Vicky will share it. It's a case of other people will share it out there, so we can get more and more exposure. And the more we do that, the more traction we get for everybody. But also, once we direct, not only you guys, who here? Just a quick show of hands. Who here has got the got the phone out today and and scanned the QR code? Quick show of hands. Yeah, not yeah. yet. Not yet. So in other words, we've forced you to drive traffic into your phone, into the app. While we drive traffic into there, we can get you to go to do other things. We can also do this with external parties as well, if that makes sense. So visitors, 
we can drive people to different areas, which means we get more exposure. And then what we want more exposure of is not just us. We want more exposure of for you. So if you haven't got your profiles up there, you're not going to get seen. We're, we're doing the heavy lifting, if that makes sense. So, Daryl, make sure you get your branding up. And, 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 you, it. And, and you, Sarah, you've got no excuses. I, 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 it's a case of, so uh, I'm not going to pick on everybody else. But anyway, ladies and gents, <laughs> thank you very much for attending tonight. Vicky, can we have another round of applause for Vicky? It's a case, I think it's, it's a really tough ask um, coming on here with, with, with us. Like, the, the fear of heckling from Mr. Egan is, is terrible. Uh, so thank you very much. Uh, enjoy your evening. My other half has just arrived. My, the, the reason I had to shoot off was to put the, uh, the cottage pie in the oven. Um, so it's uh, so yeah. So enjoy the rest of your evening. I'm happy to stand for a little bit. Uh, I don't have your bombs, I just trying to. Okay, you, you don't realise we're recording this, yeah? You're talking about lip bombs. <laughs> okay, cool. Okay, so anyway, um, Emma's lip bombs. She's ordered. Are, are they small or big or? What kind of size them? <laughs> so don't get to tell anybody, but that's for the, these are the bridesmaids. So. But don't worry, she won't watch it. So anyway, ladies and gents, thanks very much. Um, I'll see you all again soon. Cheers, all. Bye. 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 Bye.